<clears throat> Happy Guru Purnima, everyone. Hello. All right, so I am back from India. And uh, what is today? Today is, yeah, it's the 3rd of July. Yeah. So happy Guru Purnima, everyone. Guru Purnima means uh, it's a special holiday in India. It's the day of the fullness of the Guru. It's really not it have to just be one day, but it's the first full moon after the summer solstice. So when the sun has the summer solstice and it enters into tropical cancer, the sign that exalts Jupiter, the planet of the Guru, and a Brahmin sign, one of the water signs, most the water signs are the most spiritual signs. If uh, once the sun enters that Rashi, then the first full moon after the sun enters the the summer solstice and enters tropical cancer is this this holiday. And so we had the full moon like yesterday or today or, you know, just the last two or three days ish. And Guru Purnima is a great time to honor the teacher, to honor your gurus, your teachers and those who've helped you along the way. Right. So uh, I'm back from India, as you can tell. No more beautiful Ganga in the background or any of that, but I have my own beautiful scenes that I could share with you guys, and I'll try to do that more. Yeah, so what turned out to be three weeks, um, what turned out to be three weeks in India turned out turned into four months in India, and uh, yeah, I really liked it. I took to India like a fish to water, you know probably for obvious reasons, you know, if you followed my channel. It wasn't the same experience as like a random American going to India. And they don't always, you know, random foreigners don't always have a great time going to India, like I said in the previous video, for a number of reasons. Go watch the previous video for that. So I wanted to just share a little bit of uh, like updates, you know, forecasts for this summer of 2023. So I'm gonna share a few like astrological weather forecasts for 2023. And just share kind of like what I've been up to. So yeah, I mean, since I got back, I've been back for about a month now. So I got back around the middle of May. Um, and I've just been kind of in work mode. And that's kind of fascinating because if you know my uh, chart, and I mean, I share my info in previous videos and stuff and in my, in my astrology course. Um, so the, the thing with me is that I'm ruled by Jupiter. And he's my ruling planet and my Atmakarika. So it's like a double whammy of factors. And he was in Aries the entire time of 2023 up until May. So the entire time I was in India, he was in Aries, which is a sign of like adventure, right? And, um, you know, kind of just like adventuring and blazing your own trail. You know what I mean? And that's what I was doing. And then I finally started to get really tired of it, being in India and all the stress of traveling and all these things. Finally which takes most people a lot it, a lot less time to get tired of it. But I finally started to get tired of it around the eclipse season and um, in May of 2023, just a month ago or whatever. And I saw that, oh, wow, like Jupiter is about to enter into Taurus. And that's kind of like going to end that sense of adventurousness in me in a lot of ways. And there were other things too, like the lunar eclipse happening in my ninth house. I was like, ah, that's probably going to eclipse my ninth house which is the house of traveling and being on pilgrimages and things and yeah it's kind of how it played out for me but yeah i wanted to use, i just figured i'd use that as a segue to start talking about jupiter and taurus so jupiter is in taurus for the rest of this year so there's going to be these big themes for taurus individuals you guys like all of you guys who are taurus sun or taurus rising or even taurus moon will have like a lot more jupiterian expansion possibly in for the rest of this year for you but then also Rahu's there in Taurus still for at least a little while longer. But Rahu's been there for um, for the last year and a half or so. So it's been kind of a tough time for a lot of Tauruses. But now things should have started to get better for a lot of Tauruses. Or, yeah, I think that they should have started to get a little bit better for most Taurus individuals in general since May, since around the middle of or the end of May of 2023. Um, now, well, that's neither here nor there, but Jupiter has a big impact on financial markets and Jupiter's ingress into Taurus is very significant for those who are into Bitcoin and financial astro, but I don't, this video isn't focused on that. So I'll get sidetracked if I go into that. Um, 
but there is a big theme of money and resources this for the rest of this year, as there already was ever since Rahu entered Taurus, you know? And for those who followed me for a while, you know, it I was definitely saying and warning everyone that man, like when like when, in 2021, when Rahu was in Gemini and Sag, I talked about how the issues are on supply chain, like all these, uh, you know, shipping issues going on, um, you know, people being blocked from traveling, the Vax passports, all these sort of ideas were a big problem during when Rahu was in Gemini and Sag, because Gemini and Sag are signs of traveling within countries and connecting different things and roadways and, uh, yeah, like the chain of supply of goods you know but taurus is like the goods themselves the resources themselves and once rahu and the eclipses moved into taurus we started having economic issues and i tweeted about this predicted this i wasn't the only one though because a lot of astrologers saw we all saw like oh man this is when it's really going to get bad for the economy and that's why again like there's you can't find any record of me saying that the crypto bull market would continue after 2021 no it was meant to end you know for 2022 and, you know, that's what I was telling everyone in 2021 and so forth. So we knew that was going to happen is what I'm getting at. That's just about to end. Rahu is about to leave Taurus. So a lot of people are worried about the economy, but it's interesting because if the economy really was going to crash, it will have to crash like before the end of this year. You see what I'm saying? Um, then it actually like there's no astrological pressure or tension on the economy anymore. And so what's very likely to happen is we'll just print more money and just keep kicking thing, the can down the road and ignoring the debt and all these things like we always do. Um, anyway, so more on that like at another time or whatever. Um, but yeah, there is like big, you know, big talk on money in the economy, you know. Um, for those who are having difficulties with money, um, one of the best remedies I've found is really actually tithing or charity. And that kind of ties into Guru Purnima because it's a good time to honor the Guru. If you are having trouble with money, see, watch what happens when you just stop and say, okay, I've got $1,000 in my bank account. Donate 100 bucks to a spiritual ashram, you know what I mean? Or a church you follow or a, or a genuine religious organization that's not corrupt or anything. So I'll donate to the um, Meher Baba Spiritual Center or to the Center for Spiritual Awareness, this ashram that where I learned Kriya Yoga from. There's many, many, many other great ashrams. If you have a guru or an ashram or something, go and just donate to them or go and give charity. Donate, but don't donate to these corrupt big corporate charities that like uh, the Susan B. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation without actually doing a lot of research. If you go and you research these big corporate nonprofit um, charities, they in the USA, there's no legal rule of how much you actually have to donate. So they could be making a million dollars and only donating 1% of that to the actual cause and the rest of them just making that money. And um, you can really look into that. It's horrifying when you actually see the numbers. Like of all these major corporate ca uh, charities, it can be zero point something percent how much they're actually donating. So donate to a actual dharmic organization. Be sure you're correct on that. Um, but yeah, if you, have ch if you have money issues, watch how quickly they change. Just donate and then boom, you'll something will come, come to you. Um, because you're basically telling God and the higher forces, I don't know what's best to do with this money. I trust you know what's best with it. And that removes a little bit of your ego and increases your spiritual merit just a little bit. And something will, you know, money will come to you. Just watch. Just watch for it to happen. Now, um, in terms of other themes this year, um, Venus is about to go retrograde. Um, July, around July 22nd. Um, Venus will go retrograde all the way until around the first week of September. And Venus has already been in Leo, and then it will go and move through Leo. So basically, Venus has been in Leo for a while and will remain in Leo until almost the rest of the year. <laughs> so it's a big year for Leos with love, because Venus normally only spends a month in a sign. When it retrogrades, it like doubles or triples that. And so this is a big year. The rest of 2023 is a big year for relationship themes for Leos, also for Aquariuses, and also for um, Tauruses and Scorpios and Sag. So, 
I don't know. Be curious to see what happens with that. I'm not going to try to predict anything more exact with that than if, without reading the individual's birth chart. And again, this is why, like, you know, really legit astrologers that you follow, like, are the least likely to want to give astrological generic forecasts for the populace. Like, my teacher has never once done that. Um, none of, actually, none of my real teachers have ever once done that. Um, YouTubers, we have to do this just to make money, just to market. Um, that's the real reason you see a lot of these people. The reason I don't do that is because I don't have the energy to make videos like every day or every week. I, it's not my style, and um, I don't like doing all you know all the update all this technical mercurial stuff that wastes all your time, like checking notifications and replying and editing and all this stuff. I just don't like doing all that stuff. I'd rather go and you know have more free time essentially. Um, and that's why I don't have as many subscribers as these other people who are hustling these generator earth sign astrologers who are just cranking out stuff every single day. Um, but it's also because I don't believe in it because I've seen that truly like you cannot, you can only do so much when you give out these, crank out these predictions for the 12 signs. Like, like I could say, you know, Aquarius is going to have relationship ship themes this month. And I did, that's why I did. But some Aquariuses are going to have really amazing like they're gonna get married or they're gonna meet the love of their life some Aquariuses are gonna have horrible relationship themes going on some Aquariuses are just gonna not have any of that going on and that depends on all the unique personal factors in their chart maybe Venus isn't that much of a relationship factor for one chart whereas it's a really big factor for the other or maybe this person has uh, Rahu there and just with Venus and is just kind of oblivious to these things and is not gonna seize these opportunities or Whatever. You know what I mean? Um, so, there are big relationship themes this summer, and that's what's going on. If you want to know more about that, uh, you could get a reading with me or something. But Venus in Leo is actually not a great placement for Venus. You could watch the video that I did on Venus Starved by the Sun years ago on the course on the... I did a free course on Venus of Ashes on here on YouTube. So you can watch that if you want more info. But it, Venus is not going to be in good dignity, but it's going to be strong, have other forms of strength. So it will be a mixture of things, and the relationships won't... Uh, there will be a great theme of, like, sacrificing relationships. And should I sacrifice this relationship for following my real purpose, my solar destiny? Or should I just go with that and enjoy my life and ignore that calling? What to do? There will be a lot of people who are struggling with that. Um... And then speaking of relationship things, uh, Jupiter is also with Rahu. And whenever Jupiter is with Rahu, it's um, major, like, you, uh, ladies have to watch out because the man, Jupiter, is maybe not who he says he is with that Rahu there. He's, there's maybe illusions or th putting on airs or things like that. And, uh, you know, that's the funny thing is you just notice how much men are always putting on airs. But anyways, this is enough for you. Um, I've got to go and do a reading for someone. They're just showing up. But this is enough of a little forecast for now. Um, and I encourage you guys to go and uh, check out my school and take some of my courses if y'all are really getting eager to study more because I just got back from India and I'm really eager to teach more um, and get more students and stuff. And so I've got an astrology school online right now. It's uh, on Teachable. I might end up moving it or something because Teachable is kind of not, not that great uh, with what they allow us to do. But I have a Nakshatra course and a Jyotish and Yogic Philosophy course. And you can take both of those for $27 a month USD. You subscribe, you get to have access to everything. I also have a full financial astrology course up there. And I'm going to teach a five elements course. And if you're studying with me, what you get is you can do a free, you can do a tutoring, not free, sorry, you can do a tutoring session for an additional deal. Normally it's like 50 bucks a month. It's only $30 a month. If you want to, or thirty dollars an hour to do a tutoring session with me, if you're a student. So this way you can be studying all the material, and then like once every few weeks or once a month we do an hour long tutoring session where we test it out, and I really one on one work with you to make sure you're getting these concepts. So I'm really trying to train other good astrologers and teachers out there, and this is making you a well rounded astrologer, not just astrology, but you'll know, you'll learn meditation, you'll learn Sanskrit, you'll know a little bit about everything. Uh, like all this other philosophy stuff I learned in India, Sanskrit, all this stuff. So let me know if that interests you guys. Um, check out that. I have links for that below because, uh, yeah, I'm really eager to share more and I'd love to get more students, like quality students. Um, you know, you do the quantity work, but then you want to do quality work. So the quantity work is just getting this message out there to a bunch of people 
Hopefully I get a few quality students that want to go further. All right, thanks you guys. Bye.